the first of December, that song Smoke in the Water comes to mind. Ponds at 22.2 Celsius. Uh, I'm going to hold it at 22 for a bit. Fish are fine, as you can see. Uh, I've still been fed quite a substantial amount of food. This is the time I begin to condition the koi after heavy feeding. So I have my own regime. I changed up things a little bit in the last week. Um, it's my own thing I do. I don't publicize this part of it. This is something I keep to myself. So fish are now in that process, which is my part two of the season. And they're going through that. So if you can see all the koi are happy milling about. You're gonna see. But yeah, and as you can tell, I don't run the bottom drains, they're off. Uh, I got one light on, the other light is off because they've, because of the feeder is there, the fish congregate on this side and there's no point me um, heat uh, lighting up this side of the pond because only the plecos are there, as you can see. So all the fish are doing well, they're doing fine. And um, they're a little bit fat at the moment because uh, of how I feed, which is a lot compared to most ponds and they would be um really sort of getting ready to go through their weight loss program as it was so plecos are in a corner for people who ask about them there's about five or six of them in here up to 60 centimeters quite big um and as you can see there so yeah all the fish are slowly make their way around the pool as it is so this is the matsue that's the only match away I got left is that fish there. And uh, my Sankey as well. And um, yeah, so big fish. The fish up, it is quite big, and the camera may not tell you. Hard to really see perspective, but that is about 76 now. Yonsai, uh, Takigawa, Tancho, Kahaku there, and you can see one of the big plecos coming into frame, into shot now, just there. Sunny day today. City of Leicester doing some chores. Ready power wash the pre filters for the recycle arrow. Uh, my 80, 75 centimeter net handle broke last week. Uh, so I've replaced the handle. I've ordered a new mesh for it. Not bad, it's no fine nets. And I've had it for probably eight to nine years. I've never treated it before with wood stain. And it's been outside so it gets soaked and dry soaked and dry soaked and dry and uh yeah it lasted the journey so well done no fine net i've ordered a new mesh for it and i've also ordered a new handle which has been fitted and stained this time i leave that net outside because it's a smaller net my matsuda net which is my expensive one i got from absolute well uh the one meter one don't come out unless the big girls are coming out because uh, that's a bit of an artwork really that net and I don't want to leave it out to ruin it so the no fine net stays out in the weather and get beaten up so it's there for the smaller fish it would handle a fish uh, up to have netted fish up to 80 cm you got to know how to do how to use it but uh, yeah fish are looking good they just came out 
last week out of being tr treated for flukes. Um, I used uh, my traditional fluke treatment, which knocked it back for a little bit. Then I used another one that I had from Japan that knocked it back just a little bit more, uh, but still found flukes a couple of days later. This time I used the most, the popular one that everyone using, Lernex Pro, which seemed to have finally done the trick. Um, the only issue I have with that, it does, it does uh, leave some of the smaller koi with like skin burns on them, but to be honest, they do clear up after a while. I've had that before and they don't last long. Once the water quality is good, then it tends to hold out really well, so. All good. So uh, my recommendation with Lernex Pro is don't let it be the first thing you reach for. I've got two bottles spare that I've bought because I need two of the big bottles, so they're about a hundred quid a pop. Um, I will still use my traditional one and just check to see whether it worked because I, as far I, I'm no biologist or entomologist, um, and as far as I know, that as far as I've heard or understood. There are different strains of flukes. Uh, I heard someone said over 200. I'm not sure how accurate that is. So it might be that a strain that you have uh, might respond to a, uh, like a flubanol or flubenzanol treatment only. You don't need to reach for the most expensive one straight away. So that will be my recommendation because the hobby is not getting cheaper in any form. So keep a few products and try it, scrape your koi and see how they work out so there's a few fish here to go and um waiting for their owners their owners don't want to collect them they want to leave them here in this water to grow <laughs> one guy bought the chagoy this chagoy here he bought it still hasn't collected it it's almost probably twice the size when he bought it it should charge twice the price now it's been fed and grown and saki hikari i think when he bought it, it was 34 35 centimeters now it's close to 50 54 at Nisai, which is good going, Maru say. Got it bargain cheap as well, uh, unsexed. Not sure, I haven't checked it to see what it is, so. Anyhow, it's nice when the hobby goes good for a little bit, fingers crossed. Got the arrow back up and running, because that has been down while treatments are in the recycle arrow, so. Hopefully, um, it will now be so set into Christmas, they'll be fed still. I'm gonna switch over to color food once this tub of food has gone. Uh, I've got another one in the garage. Once that goes, then yeah, set over to Christmas color food. Also, we've got some Rasta merchandise. A lot of people have ordered polo shirts and other things. So if you'd like some Rasta merchandise, send me a message, I'll let you know the price and uh, we can get them to you. Uh, now Christmas postage is re really difficult, but you'll either get them close to the new year. So if you're interested in some Rasta merchandise, I've got a number of things. This is print on demand, so I don't have to have loads of stock. Um, but yeah, everything you buy not only helps um, as far as companies go, but also it helps me to produce better videos because I could then invest in more cameras and microphones and things like that. So. If you see anything that you would like on the Rasta merchandise, send me a message and I will get back to you, hopefully. And you could pay via PayPal and I could ship it. Or if you live in the area and you just want to do a quick collect, you'll be welcome to as well. All right, so the Rasta merch is here and uh, there's all a new line for, for 2021, but I can get it in uh, quickly. So um, let me know. Well, good morning. It's December the 19th. I haven't done a video for a while because I've been just busy. Busy, 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 busy. And uh, so just a quick shot of the pond. Um, as you can see, the fish are all doing well. They've been through a fluke treatment last week. Arrow is back on, our recycle arrow. And uh, yeah, they're looking good after it. They went through three types of fluke treatment, I should say. Uh, first one is my normal fluke treatment, which probably rough them, roughed up the flukes. 80% of them were gone, but there's still a few fish with flukes on. Then re-scraped, tried a different treatment. Uh, that, again, took care of most of it, but only one fish still had a few flukes on it. Um, and then I tried the uh, popular Lernex Pro. 
um, which seem to have done the trick because I can't find any flukes. That doesn't mean that there's no flukes. I just can't find any. I scra scraped a number of fish and I can't find any on there. So seem to have kicked it. And Learn Explorer is not cheap. Um, so for my pond, I need to spend 100 quid to treat it per time. Um, so what I re my recommendation will be is that uh, go with your standard fluke treatment that you use, which I know what I use, and then scrape afterwards. If you still find flukes, then try a different one and so on, because uh, they're not cheap. And then also, as far as I understand, I'm not an entomologist, but as far as I understand that there are different types of flukes. I heard someone said, I don't know how, sure, how accurate it is, but they said there's close to 200 different varieties of strains of fluke, flukes. So um so yeah best is to scrape your fish and try it so the fish are doing good these fish might be hard to pick out the size but this is they are around 88 centimeters probably close to 90. that is just yon side that yamabuki got from absolute many years ago momotaro fish it's now four years old now yon side and i reckon it's about 83 84 cm in that way so but yeah, the fish are hungry. Granted, the water is at 22 Celsius, so it's still warm. It's a mild December day, so uh, December so far has been really mild. So, and because I was treating, I don't want to drop the treat uh, temperature too quickly. And I still haven't gone into my full winter feeding program. That will happen. I wouldn't publicize it, but I have a different thing I do for winter, um, which is not necessarily what everybody else does, but it works for me. And it's my ting. All right, so I haven't done a video for a while and I just wanted to capture them now, especially for my own diary. But for those who take time to appreciate my videos and subscribe, I wanna thank you very much. Thank you for all those who leave uh, thumbs up and positive comments. Um, thank you for everybody who supported the video. Uh, we're close to 3000 subscribers. So hopefully this video and uh, my next video I'm filming later in the year uh, this year close just after Christmas I'm off to a koi dealer uh, at a exclusive opening just for Rasta koi to come and film so that video should be out by the before the new year hopefully according to how much editing I've got to do I've got some new microphones and as well to help out with that I don't have my microphone I'm filming on my phone at the moment and I don't have my plug-in mic, so hopefully the sound on this is good enough um, in that way. We'll make our way over to the fish house in a moment, but I wanted to show you the fish all doing well. And uh, yeah, you can see the winter covers are on. Winter mode of a pond is very important how you... So I'm gonna come out the wind and get into the fish house. Uh, I've been doing a lot of tidying up and cleaning. Still got some stuff to remove. The, micro the microscope is still here and uh, other bits are still there. So, yeah, so hopefully you can uh, pick up on what I was trying to say there. And I hope the sound is good because I'm not using my external mic, which I normally do, but I can't find it. Um, anyhow, so I'll be doing a few filming coming out soon i've got a more, couple more videos to come out before the year closes we jump into 2021 uh it's good to see a lot of dealers bringing in fish so there's not a shortage of fish in the country but what that leads me to what i want to talk about let me move my hand out of the way but that leads me to what i want to talk about which is um, a quarantine system for yourself um, i've only been treating for flukes because i had a fish off a dealer that turned out uh, mail so it ended up having to be sold on he's going to sort it out they're going to replace it for me uh, that's not a problem but uh, really because of my water bill was so high and also because of uh, always buying fish from one source i.e. Mike Snaden I've never had a quarantine well that will change next year next year for sure in that garage there right next adjacent to this pond is going to go in a thousand gallon quarantine simple setup it's a quarantine setup it's not a growing on i don't plan to grow on fish i don't like growing fish in the dark under lights and paying more money in electricity and heat and to grow fish where i rather go buy a decent fish put it that way than to pay the money on the utilities and stuff this is simply a quarantine so it's going to be simple the filter is going to be simple it's not going to be fed too much or fed at all really uh, it's just there to quarantine fish so 
that will be the next project once I get my second motorville and I see where I'm at then I would know where things are going but yeah it's really to encourage you to use a quarantine and use a dealer that quarantines the fish properly um, you know it's okay you can deal with parasites you and I most of you watching this deal with your own parasites whether it be flukes or costia or white spot you could deal with that once you know what you're doing it's fine but KHV is one that you can't deal with and uh, no dealer knows for sure so make sure that once that fish comes to your pond ask the questions you are the customer you've got to ask the questions about protocol what they do KHV testing because at the end of the day if it wipes out all your fish uh, no one's going to repay you back for anything so you make sure and ask the dealer the proper questions ask them uh, about KHV how they check for it how they what are their protocols because really at the end of the day once you spend that money and that fish comes and swim in your pond anything could happen and as you know not everybody likes to put their hands up these days so one of the things I want to encourage you all to do like I used to do many years ago but now I'm gonna re put back in is my your own quarantine system so well done to all of you who have one and uh, the rest of us are going to jump on the bandwagon and get our own quarantine set up it doesn't have to be massive I think you can get away with a 800 gallon quarantine set up and a bottom drain to a nexus straight back over what I love about a nexus is that it wouldn't strip out the treatments that you put in as quick as like showers and stuff so it doesn't need to be a huge system and, and also if it's just a quarantine uh, you're not there to feed the fish in the quarantine loads a couple handful of food is fine but you're not there to feed them loads so it's, it's the main thing that's important is heat and then also a filtration and water that's pretty much it you don't really need a uv you don't really need all the other things you need in the main pond and whenever new fish comes in it should sit in your quarantine for about six to eight weeks and then if there's a problem you would soon find out and you could deal with it there so Hopefully you all have a great Christmas and I will catch up with you uh, after the Christmas break. Uh, hopefully you would see the new video that's out there. But like I said, like and subscribe, share the videos and uh, please leave some good comments and, and some thumbs up. All right. Peace. Now, one of the jobs that me doing is in my red label drum. These drums here, red label aqua making red label drums i um there's a seal in the drum which is there now i've had the drum for coming into four years oops it's about to clean and uh, i need that seal change it there if you have a drum you would know exactly what i'm talking about which is this seal here um so i've got somebody coming on the 28th to change 29th to change the seal for me and he will be videos as well so that seal stops any dirty it's a silicon seal that stops any dirty things coming into the in here which will help this so i've got a new seal from the company and they are going to change uh i'm going to get that change and sorted um so at the moment the temperature is a little bit high because i'm feeding the ph is a little bit up because i've Two reasons the arrow have been down for uh, a week or so gums about to clean uh, while the treatment as i talked about earlier was going in so at the moment uh, arrow is back on i expect the ph to run back down where i want it to be which would be at 6.95 or so so that's where i'd want it to live in that way so uh, that's is that okay so the arrow recycle arrow is about to kick in so uh, some of you were asking how does it work well on my uh, from my flow friend pump that goes over the shower um, I've got a t-piece feed here which I've tapped in I say I this is designed by the designer that noise is the arrow kicking off. Um, so I've got a T piece here, there's a valve for when I'm changing. So that takes the feed of water from there. And you can hear it chuggering starting. And then it goes through 20 micron, then up, then goes through five micron. So then the water comes out here, has no contaminants, goes all the way down, goes into the arrow pump, 
itself there that uh, brass looking thing and then it goes up to the first membrane which is there uh, all the way down that's a 40 40 membrane goes all the way down goes to the second membrane 40 40 just goes all the way around and then back out so that's how the arrow works in a sense and that's the pressure so as you can see it's there and there is what it's given me at the moment in that way okay so that gives you that